This is the Jumper T16, and we're going to do a complete teardown. So the T16 is a full-size radio running on Jumper TX, which is a variation of OpenTX. It's powered by a pair of 18650 batteries, which are not included, but it does come with the battery tray, and it comes with this multi-protocol module. So let's open this thing up. First, you want to pull off these rubber grips. And then we need to remove this plate on top. After that, we've just got six screws on the back, and we're in. So here's our first look inside. But first, let's take a look at the back plate. So for the sake of completion, I thought I'd just pull the back handle off. They use a couple beefy screws to hold it in place here, so I think it's a pretty sturdy grip. So let's take a look at the internals here. What makes this radio kind of unique is the use of a lot of ribbon cables. Normally they'll use wires and uh, plug connectors. So first we've got a board that acts as an interface for the external module. And what they've done here is they've uh, set a place for a potential future internal module. But because OpenTX doesn't support an internal multi-protocol module, it needs to be added to the firmware, so we may just see that in uh, Jumper TX in the future. Next, we've got the haptic feedback motor down here, as well as the main power board and the micro SD card board. Next, let's pull out the main board. We've got a couple connectors for the gimbals, got a connector here for the speaker, got um, maybe about four screws to pull off, and two ribbon cables. First one connects to the uh, topmost board and the other ones underneath which uh, connects to the uh, display. So let's take a look at the board here. On the front we have an STM32 F4 microprocessor and on the back we've got a SD RAM chip for the display, 64 megabyte wind bond. Now to pull the gimbals out we have to remove this little uh, potentiometer and you need to push it down in order to get that topmost screw. It's pretty easy to remove, there's just two screws and um, it has the ribbon cable to uh, disconnect as well. So once you've got that out, then you can remove the gimbals. There's just one screw you can't reach without uh, taking that out first. So these gimbals are really similar to the Futaba T18SZ gimbals. And uh, Futaba uses ALPS uh, potentiometers, and those are rated for 1 million cycles. Here we've got uh, Everson potentiometers. And they're also rated for 1 million cycles, so they're actually pretty good potentiometers. And while these aren't hall sensor gimbals, they're really high quality and they feel great. I think it's really debatable whether hall sensor gimbals would be better than what they've got in here already. So before we pull the display out, uh, let's take a look at the uh, roller board. So early models of the T16 had an issue with the pin at the end of this roller when uh, pressure was applied to it to press the button it would break the pin. So uh, just keep in mind that the button is at the bottom of the roller and don't press it from the top. If your roller does break, just contact your dealer and you'll be able to get a replacement. Now we can take a look at the display. It's a 480 by 272, 4.3 inch, 16.9 display. And some users have already figured out how to replace this with an 800 by 480 IPS display and it looks quite nice. Next, we've just got a little button board for the interface controls. And finally, we've got a board with even more buttons. This has all the trim buttons and the mode buttons, the power button, the main power LED, and the speaker. And if you look really closely, you can see that each of the mode buttons has its own little LED. Up here, we've got the USB connector and the trainer port. And unfortunately, this radio doesn't charge via USB. And up here we've got a couple more potentiometers, and this won't come out without removing the black frame. So there are several screws that you need to remove in order to separate it from the faceplate. Now I didn't pull the switches off, but it looks like they unscrew from the outside. And we've just got a couple little more pieces here, and this thing is completely torn down. So the black jumper plate up front will come off and the black button board for the uh, interface will also come out. Now this last piece here is a little tricky to get out, 
and it does feel a little fragile, so I'd be careful pulling it out. Now, unless you're planning to paint the shell, I don't even think you really need to pull this thing out, but um, I just thought I'd show you that it comes out. And now to put this thing back together. So before I close this thing up, I just want to compare the gimbals. This is the QX7 stock gimbal. It's um, not the Hall Sensor gimbal, so these are both pretty comparable in terms of uh, specs. But uh, I think the quality of the T16 gimbal is much better. They're pretty much about the same size, but the uh, potentiometer in the uh, T16 is a much higher quality potentiometer. And I think the T16 just has a higher quality gimbal overall. So this video isn't really meant to be a review, but I thought I'd throw in a few extra thoughts at the end. I've been flying it for the past couple days, and I really like it. I'm used to flying the X-Lite, which is a much smaller radio and much easier to grip. But these gimbals just feel really nice. I'm still figuring out a good way to hold it, because it is a somewhat large radio and it does carry a bit of weight. It's over 800 grams with the battery. But um, I think I'm going to give it a good sporting chance, and it may just become my daily driver. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and don't forget to subscribe. Bye.